anyway, just wanted to show you that. That's how you would, you know, uh, scramble your passwords when you're running config. Okay, so router 4, as you can see, it's still not authenticating. Let's go back here and turn debugging off. And we'll go back here and we'll do uh, interface messaging at 0, 0. We'll do a no here. And then we'll do IP OSPF authentication key, and then it's going to be Cisco. And you should see, we should see a neighbor relationship, as you can see right there. Just form, show, show IP OSPF neighbor, and we're good to go now. Again, to verify you have, uh, you know, it enabled, you know, authentication, just go under, do a show IP OSPF interface on the interface that you're uh, trying to set authentication on. You should see here a uh, simple password authentication enabled. So we've got clear text, plain text, whatever you want to call it. We have all that authentication enabled between the routers now. But if I wanted to go back, say, to router 3, um, I can do this uh, interface fastening at 0, 1, and do uh, IP OSPF. Authentication key. Uh, let's see. No, that's not right. I'm sorry. There it is. IP OSPF and message digest key. Then our key ID is one. You know, you can specify 255 keys if you want. I don't know why you would, but anyway. So we're going to do key one, then we'll do MD5, and then we'll specify our password. Here we'll just, it'll be all uppercase Cisco. So if we do a show IP OSPF interface, that's going to be 01. You can see here it still says simple password authentication enabled. So we go back into that fast Ethernet 01. Do IP OSPF. And we should see here authentication. Now we can specify message digest. MD5 authentication. So do a show IP OSPF interface. You can see here now that the that the Authentication is changed to message digest authentication. Now if we do a show IP OSPF neighbor, you can see here now that our dead time is counting down here for router four. So basically MD5 authentication will trump, you know, will take priority over, you know, uh, plain text or simple password authentication across a link. As you can see here, um, we have just verified that. Okay, our neighbor is dead timer has expired. Now router four, we don't have a adjacency with anymore because um, they're using simple password authentication on router four and router three. We are using uh, again. If we look at the interface, show IP OSPF interface messaging at zero one. We are using message digest authentication, and our key that we're using is. The only one we specified, which is uh, key ID is 1. So let's go to router 4, and we'll set up MD5 authentication on it as well. So config T, interface fastener at 0, 1, and IP OSPF, message digest key, and then it's going to be key 1. We'll just use MD5, and of course, you know, that's all we can use, MD5, and then here we'll specify the password, which is Cisco. Then the other command you got to do, is uh, IP OSPF and then the authentication. Now we're not using, using authentication is going to be message digest. Instead of before we would have just done a care, you know, a CR, you know, we would just hit return there. Now we're using the IP OSPF authentication message digest. So without that, it's not going to change. And as you can see here now, our neighbor adjacency form just that fast. So if we do a show IP OSPF interface fast Ethernet 01, you can see here now that we have message digest authentication enabled, and we are using key one, which is the only key we specified. So that's it. Um, that's pretty much you know 
OSPF authentication um, and OSPF summarization uh, and you know we went over some of the different OSPF you know area types uh, you know we went over LSAs we went over you know the uh, OSPF uh, backup router I'm sorry designated router backup designated router election how that works you know what's going to take priority it's always going to be the highest loopback you know interface IP address you know the IP address of the highest loopback interface on the router um, or it's going to be the highest IP address of the, the physical interfaces that's in the up up you know state and those will take priority and try to become the you know designated router um, you can also go ahead and specify your router ID by using the you know um, uh, the router ID command within OSPF. Uh, you can also, by default, the router ID. If you don't have that specified, it's just going to become, you know, the highest IP address on your router. You know, it's going to go by the loopback. Then it's going to use the highest IP of the physical links that are up. So uh, we went over that. We went over, you know. Uh, all OSPF areas that aren't area zero must connect to area zero. Uh, you can't have you know discontinuous networks where well you can uh, you can specify you, well, you, you can't get into that. I'm sorry. You can you know do what's called the virtual link, which basically rides over one area and then connects to area zero. Uh, but you know we'll get into virtual links later on. Um, they're not too hard to, to you know to get up and working. Uh, basically, a, a virtual link. You know, say you have. Uh, so we go back to this drawing here. You know, say we add down here. We add another router. You know, and this is in area two. You know, we have it connected to the router two in area one. Well, we can specify. You know, with we can set up. Uh, area 2 to look like it's directly connected to area 0 by what's called a virtual link. Uh, we'll get into that later on though, we'll do that in, in a different video. Uh, you can also use GRE tunnels, but we're not going to get into that either. You can use that also kind of in the same way. Uh, so anyway, that's it for now. Um, I'm probably missing something, you know, there's just so much with OSPF, uh, again, if I miss something, I'm sorry, you know, there's probably something I could have, you know, done uh, different, you know, there's multiple ways to tune OSPF, uh, but the, the main thing to remember is that OSPF it is a great protocol, it's highly tunable, you can do a lot with it, and that's why it's implemented in a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of networks around the world today so I hope you guys you know I hope this video was good for you I hope you learned a lot and I just hope that you'll uh, be with me for the next video I do thanks a lot and have a good day bye